Hey guys, what's up? My name is Farza, and today we're going to talk about something called conditional statements, where basically we can uh, get our program to make decisions for us without us having to touch our program at all. And um, let's 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 give, the, let's give an example, right? So when you're in a league game and you ace the enemy team, you have a set of options you can um, you can go through, right? You can end the game, um, or you can do other things. You can farm. You can do Baron. You can do Dragon. So. In programming, it's called an if-else block, which is basically a conditional statement. We're saying, if we do something, then we do this. Else, we do this. So let's, think of, uh, let's use that example we used previously. So if I ace the enemy team, then I end the game. Else, I will do Baron, or I'll do Dragon, or I'll farm. So you're giving your program options to do things, basically. Now let's see how that would look in an actual program. But before we do that, let's talk about something, let's breeze over something really fast. And, but it's pretty important but easy to grasp. They're called conditional operators. It's how we compare values in C. So for example, let me delete this. This is the, uh, what symbol is that? I'm sorry guys. This is the less than symbol, yeah, less than. All right, this is the less than symbol. And you know, if you, that's pretty simple. You check if things are less than each other. So one, to this, this would return true. This is true, right? One, two is greater than one. But then we also have this one where we check if something is less than or equal to, just like in a math class, right? So if I have two and two, well, this would return true. Let's see. Uh, <clears throat> let's see somewhere where this would return false, right? So if this was one. Well, one is not greater than one is not bigger than two, and one is not equal to two. So this would return false, right? Um, and this and this one, the, the greater than symbol works exactly the same way as as this one. So you know these are pretty easy to understand. The one that's a little bit more difficult to uh, to grasp is the equal equal to. So you know when we're declaring variables, right? If I do something like int number is equal to two, this equal to is setting number equal to two. Though, when we're comparing values in C to check if they're exactly equal to each other, we have to use two equals. And two equals means we're comparing two values. So, just know the difference. One equal sign means we're setting something equal to something else. Like, literally, we're setting that value equal to it. But two equal signs, we are not touching the value of that number. We're just checking if two things are equivalent to each other. All right. Hope you guys understand that there. All right, so let's uh, let's make a simple program that makes a decision for us. Let's work with uh, let's work with Annie. So let's say we want to make a program where um, we want to see if Annie's entire combo, her Q W R, let's we want to check if we survive. We can survive her combo after she damages us with all the all those skills. So let's see. If, let's declare a variable. We'll call it int my health. <clears throat> So this is our champion's health. Let's give ourselves 100 health. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, let's just give us 100. Yeah, 100 is fine. All right, now we want to figure out all of Annie's damages, right? We want to make sure, we want to figure out how much damage her Q, W, and R does. We'll leave out, leave out her E right now because it doesn't really do damage, like, straight up. So we'll do Annie, Q damage is equal to, let's just make it 30. And we'll do int, always tab, and then write everything under your main. Any w damage is equal to 30. So let's just let's make it a little bigger. Let's do 50. And then int any r damage is equal to 50. No, let's, let's give her more. 70. Tibbers does a lot of damage. Okay. So now we want to check if any hits us with all of her skills. Will we die? So, you know, just by adding these up, 70 plus 30 plus 50 is 150. So 150 is a lot better than 100. So we should die, right? But let's just go through it. Let's just figure out programmatically what the answer is. So we want to first add up all of Annie's damages, right? So let me show you a new way to, you know, add up these things. I can actually declare my variable and add things to it at the same time. So I can say that this, the total damage, I can first declare the variable and then add everything up on the same line. Like this, any Q damage plus any W damage 
plus any R damage. So everything is on the same line, which is great for us because it saves some space, looks nice, it's easy to understand. Cool. So now we want to check if we're going to die, right? And this, this is where the if else statement block comes in. So first, let's write out our if else statement block. Our if statement is just going to be a simple, it's going to say if, and then we're going to have two, per, and we're going to have two parentheses here. And in these two parentheses, we're going to see if something is true. And I'll talk more about that later, in just a sec, actually. And now we want to we want to have two. You see, how we have two brackets to uh, to show that this is our main. We we want to do the same thing with our if statement. So we're going to do if that. So now we know that everything. Whoa, what's that? That everything in between these two brackets is in our main. And we're going to do the same thing with our else. Oh, whoa, our else. We're going to say else. Do this. So these are. This is pretty easy to understand because of the wording. Basically, it's saying if something is true, then do the command that I give you. Else, do this. So, if um, if I have 150 health and Annie does 150 damage, then do this. Else, do this. So, let's let's put everything together now, right? We want to check. We want to check if uh, we're gonna die, right? So, if my health minus ooh, minus any total damage so what are we checking now right we want to check if we're gonna die right if our health is gonna fall below zero so if this number gives us a value that is um, smaller than or equal to zero we're gonna die right so if this number gives us zero means we have zero health left we're dead right but if I have 100 health and Annie does 150 damage, it does negative 50 damage, right? I'm going to have negative 50 health. So that's less than zero, right? That's smaller than zero, which is exactly what we're checking for here. We're seeing if something, if something is smaller than zero or equal to zero, it means we're dead. If our health is at a negative number, it means we're dead. So if this happens, we're going to say this. Annie killed us. And we're dead, right? That sucks. No skill champion. Wow, I can't believe she killed us. Like just point and click, right? Broken. All right, so let's say Annie didn't kill us. Let's say she didn't have enough damage to kill us. Well, then we could just print Annie. Annie didn't kill us. Annie didn't kill us. Yep. So let's see. So we know what this program is going to give us, right? Since a hundred, one hundred minus like over here, this is basically seeing. If 100 minus 150 is zero, we're seeing if, which is basically this, it's saying, um, which gives us negative 50, right? We're seeing if that, if zero is bigger than this, negative zero is bigger than negative 50, right? Therefore, it should print this line. So let's see what that gives us. We're going to build and run our project. All right, any killed us. We are dead. And the program has confirmed that. So let's think of a situation where Annie doesn't kill us. So let's give ourselves some more health. Let's give ourselves 200 health. So now this 100 will turn into 200. And 200 minus 150 is 50. So 0 is not bigger than 50. So this will return tr false. So when something returns false, it basically skips everything under the if statement and just skips over to the else. So if this isn't true, then this has to be true, right? If this is not true, then this has to be true. So let's run this. It should say that Annie didn't kill us, right? And Annie didn't kill us in this situation because this returned false. We had too much health. We were smart. We built MR and health, and we won. So yeah, this is a simple if-else statement block. This is how our program can make decisions for us on the fly with us, without us having to do anything to our program. And it's really convenient. And you'll see, the, uh, and you'll see more use, how we use this a lot more in more complicated programs later on. But yeah, this is a simple, the simple, a very simple example. And uh, yeah, uh, next episode we're going to talk more about how we can control our program without actually, you know, touching it. It just makes decisions on its own. And that'll be next video. See you guys later.